The Aztecs would prefer to rock and roll at the arena. Aztecs still not shooting that well, but they are winning. Which would you rather have? Good game tonight against UTEP. Aztecs never trailed. Joe McNall, freshman for Monta Vista High, always hustling. Coach Brandenburg played the kid more. Big first half for Cordy Miller. Cordy from Torrey Pines High. We need to come up with a nickname for the local guys. But the Aztecs needed a place to hide in the second half. They almost blow this one. UTEP stayed close. Three-pointer for Herman Hall. Miners got it down to one point late in this game. But later, Marty Dow, he will make a nice follow. And the Aztecs, yes, the Aztecs, they made some clutch free throws in the last seconds. This time, Hall's three-pointer, no good at the buzzer. Aztecs hold on, win it 58 to 55. Aztecs now eight and eight overall, three and three in the WAC. USD also wins tonight. Toreros in first place in the West Coast Conference. They beat up USF 90 to 68. The final. Anthony Thomas, 23 points for USD. Find it's a chance to meet some former Aztec greats. Big League up. Doug Harvey attended state in the 50s and hasn't forgotten his roots. Coming back and letting these kids know that. We do care about them. We care about their program. I, I would hate to think that baseball would be knocked out, which they spoke of earlier about the fact that they were possibility of knocking them out. And I would hate to see baseball leave San Diego State. Players like Greg Nettles, Tony Gwynn, Dave Smith, and Bud Black got the list of Aztec alumni, and that certainly has to help attract new talent. I know that uh, when I was uh, getting recruited, you know, I saw the number, you know, I knew that, you know, Craig Nettles went here, and I knew that Dave Smith went here, and, uh, yeah, so you sort of want to be uh, in a situation that maybe some big leaders uh, went to that school. So, uh, if it helps, Coach, uh, uh, that's great. The success of the program revolves around Coach Jim Dietz. Now, he's had some great athletes over the years, but just as important, he's had quality people. Of course we're proud of them, but I'm also equally proud of the people who are lawyers, the dentists, the uh, policemen, uh, the border patrol, the FBI agents, the college professors. We have four or five of our alums that are actually professors in various campuses and around California. So they mean as much to me in some ways even more because uh, that is what you go to school about. When you stop playing, you know, not everybody can play professional ball. You, you stay in contact with a lot of guys that were here because they are good people and people that you want to hang around. Chris and his brother Tony, uh, good examples of what Dietz means when he talks about quality people. We have conference games tonight. San Diego State plays BYU at the Sports Arena. Toreros open their conference season against Santa Clara over at USD. News and some bad news. Aztecs going for their second straight league win tonight. And it seems the Aztecs are going to live and die with the three-pointer this year. Tonight, they died. Biggest crowd of the year, 5,800 at the arena to see BYU. Aztecs jumped out to a 12-point lead in the first half. Sean Jamison on the breakaway. Aztecs shot the three-pointer well in the half, 6 of 9. Vern Thompson had 10 points tonight. But the Aztecs really had a tough time getting the ball inside. Didn't see much of this. Another Jamison slam. He had 11. Aztecs couldn't penetrate, and then they started to miss badly from the outside. Meanwhile, BYU starts to heat up. They take a three-point lead late in the game. 15 seconds left. Aztecs going for the tie. They get it to Michael Best, but he can't hit it. The Aztecs lose to BYU 63-60, to lose a winnable game. Aztecs now 1-1 one one in the whack. The number one primetime news hour in Los Angeles. Channel 5 News at 10. Larry McCormick, Minerva Perez, Ed Arnold with sports, and the entire award-winning Channel 5 News team. Good evening. Thousands of runners took to the streets of Los Angeles today for the fifth annual Los Angeles Marathon. It was an exhilarating day for competitors and spectators alike. However, tragedy struck when the route became the scene of the first death in the marathon's five-year history. One of the runners, 59-year-old William McKinney, died during the race after suffering a massive heart attack. Now, Ed Arnold's going to have more on the marathon in just a moment, but first, Ed has the sad details of another sports tragedy today here in Los Angeles, one that has left us all with heavy hearts. Ed. Larry, we have a most upsetting story from basketball. Loyola Marymount star Hank Gathers is dead tonight at the age of 23. Gathers and the Lions were hosting Portland in a WCC tournament game at LMU's Gersten Pavilion in the first half. He took that alley-oop feed from Tyrell Lowry for the dunk and then just moments later collapsed. He was conscious initially and tried to set up. 
Only moments later, he went into convulsions. The paramedics treated him. They rushed him to a hospital. But unfortunately, it was in vain. Hank Gathers sustained a synoptical event tonight while playing basketball at Loyola Marymount University. Cardiac resuscitation was performed by the physician in attendance, and he was transported to Daniel Freeman Hospital, where further resuscitation was continued. At 6.55 p.m., he was pronounced dead. We'll have more in the regular sports segment. The Los Angeles Marathon was to be the day's major story. It was, as Larry said, a, a scene of another tragedy. The results seem insignificant in light of all this. Let's briefly see, though, who did win. In the men's competition, it was a battle until the final 700 meters. When Columbia Show with Hank up there that we really wanted to play hard for him. One thing I had felt, I, I thought about before the game, was how bad I would feel if we lost. You know, I would really feel like I let him down. So I said, I, we better not lose. I better make sure we don't lose. And I think that they were totally consumed with playing and playing well as a sign of their affection for Hank Gathers. It was the novelist William Faulkner who said of a choice between grief and nothing, I shall take grief. On Friday night in Long Beach, California, the sad noble lions of Loyola Marymount took their grief and turned it into something very special. Here comes Kimmel again. Makes an offensive foul, and that's number four on Bo Kimball. Loyola struggled to a 46-46 halftime tie against New Mexico State as the Lions' Bo Kimball picked up four fouls. When I left him in with four, a couple of the players on the other team said, hey, he must be one crazy dude. <laughs> and Bo said, yeah, he is. <laughs> right around his man, Bo Kimball for three. Horse, like playing horse. <laughs> but after the coach dared to leave his star in the game, Kimball finished with 45 points and 18 rebounds, enabling the Lions to win, as well as honor their fallen leader, Hank Gathers. This game was for Hank. You know, we pretty much dedicated all of our postseason play in, in remembrance of Hank. And it was special that we won in this fashion to prove that we can play with anyone and, and, and beat them anywhere. Towards the end, when we knew that we had the game won, it was, hey, this one's for Hank. And, you know, it felt so good. Everybody on this team has cried so much, you know, in the funeral and the service. I mean, we're like almost out of emotions right now. All we're thinking about now is trying to win a championship for Hank. This is Curry Kirkpatrick, CBS Sports. Yes, the dream is alive. What a remarkable effort last night by the Lions. Next for them will be defending national champion Michigan tomorrow. But come